Hey guys, how's it going? It's Cody Orville. Today's video, we're gonna talk about this bike that's right behind me here, the Kona Sutra LTD 2020 model. Now, Kona has come out and released some new 2021 uh, Sutra models, the ULTD and the new LTD. Not much has changed um, with the new LTD from this 2020 model. Literally, it's just the color change and I think the bar tape they changed as well, which is barely a difference, you know? So I'm gonna do a review. I've had this bike for, um, since the beginning of 2020, it's been around 10 months or so. And I've had my fair share of riding on this bike. And what I wanna do is share uh, my experience with you guys and, and uh, maybe give you guys some insight whether or not you should get this bike if you're interested. So if you can tell uh, from behind me here, I did end up changing the tires, which is what I'll get into. That's the, pretty much the only modification that I've made to this bike. And I added some like tape around the tubing and stuff because I had some issues with the paint wearing off and things like that, which I'll get into probably at the end of this video. But what I wanna do is first introduce the bike and we'll talk about all the components and all that really cool stuff. So essentially Kona categorized this bike as a drop bar bike that feels like a mountain bike, rides like a mountain bike, but it also has the speed of a road bike. It's kind of like a mountain biker's road bike if you like. So it's considered technically a touring bike because of its geometry, which is what we'll get into soon. It has, you know, a long wheelbase, a decent sized chain stay, so you can fit panniers on there if you like. Front center is quite out there as well, which means that your toe isn't gonna hit the front wheel if you have front panniers uh, and all that stuff. So it's more upright as well. It's really suited for touring, but it has like, a dash of like off-road adventure in its future, if you like. It makes a really good bike packing bike. Has really good tire clearance as well. So the tire clearance, I've been able to fit um, the maximum tires on this. A 29ers, 2.3 inch tires. So they're a mountain bike tire and that's as wide as I'm gonna go on these. When I ride in mud, the mud, you know, gets over on the wheel and it, it really gets to the limit. So, you know, 2.3 inch tires is probably as far as I would like to go with this. It comes stock with the Venture, the WTB Venture 700C uh, 50 mil tire. Um, they're pretty beefy as they are, and they're a low profile tire with a little bit of a wall on the side that has, if you like, a bit of chunkiness. So then when you're cornering, it grabs into the terrain, which is great. I found them really fast and speedy. They are a beefy tire, as in how wide they are, but they're really fast on gravel. I did have some issues with those tires, which is why I did change them. They ended up, you know, spinning out when I was riding really steep, loose gravel terrain. They couldn't grip as well. So I ended up wanting to ride this bike a lot more on single tracks and mountain bike trails and stuff I'm out here in the national parks that we have. So I did end up opting for those mountain bike tires. So this bike goes back to 2016. From what I could tell from my research, that was one of the very first bikes they did make in 2016. Um, to the 2020 model, they've made one every year since, and to 2021. Now, I haven't seen much changes. I did compare it from the 2016 model. Um, a few changes here and there on the frame build and all that kind of stuff, but like your components and things stay the same. So you have the SRAM Rival 1 all the way through from 16 to 2021. So not much has changed. Um, I mean, you get a few more eyelets, like on the fork here, you get those four eyelets on either side, which is really great uh, for bikepacking, adding, adding cargo cages uh, and whatever else you can fit on there. So it's always great to get a bike that has so much mounting capabilities for adventure cycling. So that's another reason why I chose this bike as well over last uh, year's 2019 model, which only was limited. It had a couple of eyelets on the fork. I think it might've been two. But also if you want some insight to the new 2021 models, I did end up writing an article, the Kona Row versus the Kona Sutra. So that'll be linked down below and it touches on, you know, the comparison between the two new uh, LTDs. So the LTD and the ULTD. So limited, LTD and then you have unlimited, which is what the ULTD means. So I'll have a link down below for that article if you want a bit of a comparison. And also the Rove, it's another popular bike that a lot of bike packers are considering between um, either this Sutra or that Rove. So definitely consider. Let's get into the nitty gritty of the bike and talk about its components. It comes with a one by 11 Rival or a SRAM Rival 1 uh, drivetrain or group set. And that 
is in that upper to mid range component level. I did find that it's really nice coming from a Dior, changing to a rival like this. Oh, it's so clean. Uh, you probably don't need to go any higher than that unless you want to race and you want, you know, ultra high grade components. I wouldn't recommend going for a bike with any better components than that unless um, you want like a belt drive chain or something like that, you know? Yeah, I found this performed extremely well. The only issue I did kind of have was with the rival brakes. They did end up wearing down after about a thousand kilometers of riding, but that was because I was riding pretty damn hardcore. I took this thing on the Vic Divide. That's a 550 kilometer ride, up steep hills, up to Mount Buller, and then you ride down and I had a loaded bike and I was hard on the brakes for a whole day probably, just grinding those brakes down. So I was pretty expected to have those brake pads worn down. It's kind of the only real issue I've had with these components. So guys, it's a full steel build. So you get a steel frame and a steel fork. The steel is kind of lightweight. I'm used to a Surly bikes. Their steels are probably a bit heavier. My, from what I can tell, I haven't compared them by weight though. So don't take my word on it, but from like ride feel and like lifting the bike up and all that kind of stuff, I feel like this more modern steel I don't know, Surly might be a modern steel as well, but I find this bike steel is really lightweight. Uh, the bike is around 13 kilograms, uh, which is 28.7 pounds. And it is, yes, a little bit heavy for if you're wanting a really lightweight bike compared to carbon bikes, you know, around that, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 kilogram mark. It's three kilograms heavier. So that's something to consider. It is, again, a touring bike and touring bikes are much heavier. So typically weight doesn't matter on a touring bike because you're riding with, you know, full pannier setup. But however, this isn't the kind of bike that you want to be riding full panniers in the front, full panniers at the back. It's not suited for that. Kona has their dedicated, more traditional Sutra touring bike which comes with racks. This, in my opinion, is ideal if you wanna run maybe smaller micro panniers, as they call them, or you wanna run bike packing bags. That's what I'd recommend for this bike if you're looking to you know, go adventure cycling and stuff like that. So it comes with the SRAM Rival 1 flat mount hydraulic disc brakes, uh, which again, I did touch on. They're really good brakes, powerful brakes. Uh, they do get pretty hot, um, as expected with disc brakes, I guess. Like sending it down some really steep hill sections and you're just holding on for dear life under those brakes. It's my first time really having hydraulic brakes on a bike. I've I've had like just disc brakes on my Surly and that's the other only other bike that I've kind of really had. Yeah, <laughs> I touched it and it burnt my finger. It was so damn hot. You could smell the burning and stuff. But they perform extremely well. And again, they wore down after about a thousand Ks of hardcore brake usage. I just had to change the pads and Away we go again. So the group set sees a 36 tooth crank, which is the race face effect narrow wide. And then you get the SRAM XG1150 cassette, which is a 10 by 42 toothed cassette. I like to break it down and find out what the granny gear is of a bike. Cause then we can compare it to other bikes through the gear inch and find out how capable this bike is. This bike is pretty limited with its current 36 tooth at the front setup when it comes to climbing, especially really steep single tracks. It, it struggled, especially with bike packing setup. I had to get off the bike and push it up some steep hills and stuff. While other people, for example, on the Vic Divide ride that I was doing, it's a mountain bike course. So they, most of the people had mountain bike gearing. And this one, um, it only has a gear ratio of 0.8 to 3.6. So it is rather limited. And the granny gear, it is 24.45 inches for the climbing gear. Again, that is not the best. I think what I might be doing is chucking a smaller crank in the front, maybe a 34 or a 32 tooth. So for example, the bike with the current setup, it has a decent range for touring. If you're you know, planning to ride with around 10 kilograms of gear on the bike, if you're gonna do anything over that, uh, you probably wanna opt for a touring bike. Like if you wanna ride with 25 kilograms of stuff, that's touring bike territory. So go for a dedicated touring bike with racks and all that kind of stuff and a three bike group set where it's gonna give you a huge range, you know, 18 inches to 110 like that that's a touring bike range or 20 inches to 110 it's going to give you a good range there so if you're expecting to only carry you know 10 kilograms of gear then 25 inches to 110 inches is a good range to look for in a bike so this bike sits under that 25 inch at 
uh, 24 and a half pretty much. So it's pretty good if you're wanting to ride fairly lightweight. But the thing is, if you want to do off-road touring, it's limited. You want to try and get down to 18 gear inches and the bike is just not capable for that. So ideally, if you want to do off-road touring, I don't recommend this bike. Even if you do change your gears, it's probably still not capable. But that's the thing, if you plan to ride gravel, and some tarmac with a little bit of single track and trails here and there, this bike is completely capable and that's kind of the type of riding that I would recommend for this bike. Also, uh, with the tires that come with the bike that I mentioned before, the WTB Venture 50s, uh, I'll have a link down below for an article on my blog, cycletraveloverload.com, where I reviewed the, the wheel, the tire, and I talked about like why I ended up changing from that tire that was stock on this bike to these 29 by 2.3 mountain bike tires. Um, part of it was because of the spinning out on really steep inclines and stuff, but the link is down below if you want to read a review on the stock wheels that come with this bike. Also, a great thing about the bike I liked was the Kona Road Bars. So these come with a 16 degree flare, which is pretty nice. And it's uh, not over the top. I mean, it's just a slight little flare uh, but it adds a little bit of aggression for those downhill sections when you ride in the drop bars. Like, I found riding in those drop bars really comfortable. You're kind of in an upright position thanks to that stack to reach ratio. And you're kind of upright, but you're in the drop bars and it's just like feels nice and cruisy and comfortable and I really liked it. Okay guys, so let's um quickly touch on the geometry of the bike and how it sort of feels overall while riding. I did sort of allude to this a bit earlier on, but I have the uh, 56 centimeter frame bike. Um, it's one of, I think that's maybe a large, to be honest. So again, as I mentioned, it's a nice upright position. You get a, a 1.58 stack reach ratio. So technically anything over 1.5 for a stack reach ratio is considered upright and it's gonna be fairly comfortable for those long days in the saddle. 1.58, super comfortable you're not hunched over and you don't get a sore back, it's beautiful. Then you have the chain stay length at 445 millimeters. So this makes it feel rather chill in the rear. So it's not quick, but it's also not overly stable as well. So it's somewhere in the middle there where uh, it's not sluggish in the back. So when you're climbing up hills, it's not like it's a drag and it's just, you know, holding your back. Um, it's pretty relaxed and chill, you know what I mean? And then the trail is 63 millimeters. So this makes it feel rather predictable in the front there. So when you're cornering and stuff, so I found it's rather nice and predictable for when you're cornering around like obstacles on the trail and stuff like that. So again, the front isn't sluggish. So at that 63 millimeter, it's not like it's a delayed response when cornering and stuff. Although one thing I don't like about the geometry on the bike is the standover height. It's rather high. And I think this technically makes for getting your foot over the bike or your legs over the bike a bit harder. So with the 56 centimeter, it's 840 millimeters. That's fairly high. And it's a bit lower. I think it's 820 or something like that for the 54 centimeter. Compared to other bikes, it's a bit high. But other than that, guys, this bike it's bloody amazing. I've, I've been really, really happy with how it's performed. Maybe if I was to pick on a few other things, one other thing that I didn't like, uh, when I chucked on my bike packing bags on the rig, the paint job just doesn't seem quality. Maybe I was sending it pretty hard on that Vic Divide ride. It was pretty hardcore stuff. The bags ended up wearing into the frame. I had no protection under the frame. Could have been my own fault, I reckon. But I've had something like a Surly, and they seem to have really good paint sort of quality with bags and stuff. And I haven't found that the paint sort of dissipates on the frame, but that's what I found on this bike. So I ended up uh, opting to add some three mil helicopter tape. I'll try and link the video down below of how I installed that. But yeah, other than that guys, it's been a great bike and I've been very, very happy how it's been able to perform for me and my bike packing adventures. If you're looking for a bike that has feel of a touring bike so you get that super you know comfortable riding feel for month long multiple month long uh touring adventures but you also plan to ride off-road and get off the tarmac see what i found in my journey is 
Like I rode from here to Cairns, uh, which is Melbourne to Cairns in Australia, all on the road pretty much. I took some trails here and there, but I found my, my bike at the time, it had like skinny touring tires and and I found like, I just wanted a bike that was capable to, to tackle gravel and some light off-road stuff so I could get off you know, the road and cars rushing by me all the time. So that's why I chose the Sutra because it had that ability to go off-road as well and maybe even push it a little bit further on some single track trails. It seems to hold up pretty well as well on that. So if, um, if that's kind of the riding you have planned, uh, I definitely recommend this bike for you. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Hopefully this video was informative and you got some value out of it. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.